Hey all, so I've seen a lot of questions and discussion lately on some of the paddling groups that I'm in around what shoe is the best paddling shoe. I've managed to accumulate a bunch over the years and I've figured out what works for me and why. And so I felt like maybe sharing some of what I'm looking for in a paddling shoe might help you when you go shopping. A little bit about my background. Um, I've been a kayaking instructor since 2009. I've led over a thousand miles of expedition sea kayaking trips on the coast of North Carolina, and I taught paddling in Oman, the United Arab Emirates, and Hong Kong, and I've been teaching paddle boarding since 2014. So first, let's talk about what I'm looking for in a paddling shoe. Number one, it absolutely has to be comfortable. That's paramount. Number two, I'm looking for something that either has straps or laces. There's two reasons for that. First one is that if I need to do any walking or hiking, I need to be able to snug that shoe up so my foot doesn't slide around too much so that I don't get chafing, blisters, or bruising. So the second reason for having straps or laces is so that if I step in really deep mud, the mud doesn't take the shoe off my foot. I've had so many participants lose shoes in deep mud. So another parameter when you're shopping for a shoe is whether you want a barefoot feel or whether you need more protection and support in the sole of the shoe. So a lot of paddling shoes have a very barefoot feel, which is basically no support and no protection. Whereas other shoes are gonna have better arch support and protect you more if you're walking around on rocks so you won't bruise your feet. Sometimes I work someplace that requires that I have closed toed shoes. So that's gonna have a big impact on whether or not I can wear a sandal or whether I have to buy more of a shoe. So if you're traveling, you want a shoe that's low profile and lightweight, but also a shoe that you may be able to do multiple things in, like go shopping around town and also go paddling. Of course, with anything that we wear in the water, we want something that's gonna dry quickly and not get weighed down when it's wet. This means that if I'm in a hot environment, I need to avoid neoprene, which takes forever to dry. So let's talk about Chacos, which are probably the most popular most common paddling shoe. This has become a shoe that people will just wear around town. They're really comfortable. They last forever. They're really durable. Um, they are quick on and off with this quick adjustment buckle. The straps um, are super, super adjustable, so they fit a bunch of different people's feet. Um, the footbed itself is almost orthotic, so it's super supportive and very protective against rocks. Um, as far as straps go, they come in a bunch of different strap colors and styles. You can get something you really like that fits your foot. Speaking of straps, you can get a, a strap around your toe and they also come without the toe loop. Um, if you get the style that is a single strap right here, you can actually squish the toe strap down if you don't want your toes divided or if you need to wear socks, um, smashing that toe down allows you to put a sock on. So Chacos also come in a couple of different um, sole styles. So if you are gonna be hiking, you can get, I think this is the hiking sole. Um, and if you're gonna be on wet slippery rocks, they actually make a stealth rubber sole, which is stickier. Um, so now that we've talked about the advantages to Chacos, let's talk about the disadvantages. So first off, they are big and clunky and heavy. They do float but I feel like they take up a lot of space in my boat and I have little feet. A lot of people who have bigger feet and smaller kayaks um, feel like this is too much shoe. Obviously, I don't have any toe protection, so I'm more likely to stub my toes in this shoe. Because it's so open, um, sometimes I get rocks stuck between my foot and the shoe and I have to reach in there and dig them out or shake my foot to get them out. One weird thing um, that most of you won't have an issue with, but I do, is that I need my heels covered in my sea kayak because I have a rudder. And if my heel is exposed, I get my heels get scratched up from the sand that's in my, my kayak. So I personally need my heel covered. Um, this shoe is obviously not a barefoot shoe. You don't really, you can't really feel um, the ground under you and it doesn't wrap very easily around rocks and things. Some cool things about Chacos, if you do wear out your straps, you can get your straps replaced, and if you wear out your sole, I think they're still replacing the soles, but I'm not 100% sure on that. 
because these are nylon, if you have to hike long distances in them, um, you do people do tend to get some chafing and blisters from that. And I've actually also gotten blisters from this textured sole. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Another super popular shoe is the Keen. I've got a ton of use out of these. Um, some advantages, they have really great toe protection. They are, the sole is a bit, is pretty rigid, so you won't bruise your feet if you're hiking on rocks. It's a little less supportive than a Chaco as far as arch support, but it still has more than some of the other shoes that we're gonna talk about. Um, they do have some pretty good adjustment in the straps, so they do fit most people's feet, although they are kind of wide. Um, they have eliminated the problem with the chafing and um, blisters from the nylon by lining them with neoprene. The downside, of course, to neoprene is that it takes forever to dry. So if you're on a multi-day trip, these can start to smell. These specific shoes I have are actually kids' shoes. I'm lucky because I can wear kids' versions of everything. Um, and the heel is covered. So this was really great for me when I was sea kayaking, but the adult version has an open heel. Um, another thing I did not like about these was if I ever got a rock in my shoe, I actually had to take this off to get the rock out. I couldn't reach in there and pull it out and shaking the shoe, like shaking my foot in the shoe, only put the rock down in here. Um, I also had problems when I was walking through deep sand with sand accumulating in the toe and I'd have to take the shoe off and dump it out. I also think that these are really ugly and I wouldn't just wear them around every day. Um, so they're a great option. You can hike in them. Um, they're really comfortable um, and, and they're really versatile. So they are a great option. So the next shoe we're going to talk about, um, I can't actually find my favorite pair. I have two pairs. So these are Vibram Five Fingers KSO Trek Sports. I also have a pair of the Five Fingers KSO. The main difference, so the top of, the, of both shoes is the same where you have this like stretchy quick drying fabric and mesh with a strap and a, this little heel pad. The KSO Trek Sport has a more rigid hiking style sole and the regular KSO has a very thin, lightweight, flexible sole. I originally bought my KSOs to lead expedition sea kayaking trips with. And the reason for that, I needed and wanted a shoe that felt very barefoot. I wanted to feel like there was nothing taking up extra space in my kayak. I needed my heel covered I wanted sand to stay out of my shoe, which this absolutely did. I needed a strap and a shoe that was going to stay on really well. I needed a shoe that when I was walking through deep sand that felt barefoot, but would protect me from being burned by the hot sand. The downside to the KSO and the KSO Trek Sport is that because they're so closed in and they don't have any drain holes, they do take longer to dry and they can start to smell. They also, because of these little individual toe pockets, they take a long time to put on um, and they can be kind of tricky to put on. Some, and some people really hate the feeling of their toes being separated. The regular KSO, it has a really, really thin sole. So you're more likely to get bruised if you're walking on rocks and they have pretty much no arch support at all. This is the KSO Trek Sport. I bought this because I was leading canyoneering trips when I lived in the Middle East and I wanted a shoe that would keep out all the little pebbles out of my shoe that felt barefoot when I was walking over big boulders and things, but had better protection because I kept getting my, my, the balls of my feet were getting bruised when I was wearing my regular KSOs. So I've actually led some sea kayaking trips in this specific shoe too, um, and they're fine, they're great. They do a great job protecting you against oysters and rocks, um, and they're low profile enough that they feel pretty barefoot. Um, they are kind of crazy looking, so you know you wouldn't really want to like wear these out around town unless you're totally okay with getting weird looks. Um, so another downside to the any of the Vibram Five Fingers is that this is kind of a, a one season shoe. If it's cold out, I can't layer this with a neoprene sock um, because my socks don't have these divided little toes. They do make this in a neoprene version, but then I have to have two pairs of shoes, one for cold weather and one for warm weather. My all-time favorite paddling shoe and all-around general favorite pair of shoes 
are the Astral Low Yaks. So I love these shoes so much, they've become my daily shoe, and you'll see me wearing these just around town. Um, some features of this shoe, it does have a siped sole, which means that they take a like some kind of blade and they cut little lines into the sole. And what that does is when I flex my foot when I'm on a rock, it gives me better grip. Um, it does. They do have drain holes. They have drain holes in the front and the back and on either side. Um, this mesh allows the shoe to breathe pretty well, but does a really good job keeping the sand out. It actually kind of looks like just a regular shoe, so you can get away with wearing this around town. Some downsides to this specific shoe. Number one, it does have a lot of canvas and it has a little bit of neoprene up here. So it takes a little while to dry and they tend to get stinky pretty quickly. Astral addressed this problem and they came out with a newer version of this shoe that's, that dries a lot faster. This is almost a barefoot shoe. It has very, very little protection and pretty much no arch support. So if you're worried about getting bruised on your, the bottoms of your feet from rocks or you need more arch support, Astral has other shoes that have, that have a thicker sole, so they're more protective and they have better arch support than this shoe. Because this is like a normal shoe, I can wear regular socks with this, or if it's cold, I can wear my neoprene socks with this too. The laces give me a more customized fit than I can get with some of the other style paddling shoes. I hope this video will help you when you go shop for paddling shoes, and thanks for watching.